Am I on? We're on. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Omnibros Live. I am <clears throat> part of the Laurel and Hardy team where I'm Oliver Hardy while my silent partner Stan uh, <laughs> uh, has mic problems. So we're the Omnibros Live squad here to bring you uh, peace and love and happiness and comic books. Uh, oh, good. We're helping Ox meet Pete because he had to go get a gallon of milk. We're waiting. So um, I'm Omnidog from Omnidog's Vault. And um, our fabulous sponsor is InStockTrades.com, where you can get 50% off, up to 50% off uh, your collected editions. They have some books that are 55% off the last time I checked. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. There's always a $50 gift card given away at the end of the month, which is rapidly approaching. <clears throat> $50 or more in the United States gets you free shipping. Fabulous customer service. Fabulous packaging. That's in stocktrades.com. Ow. <laughs> Okay, so it's Hall's previews and reads, and I'm the only one with a live mic. What? Can the uh, chat can the chat hear me? If the chat can hear me, press a press uh, one on the keyboard. If the chat I can hear no, me, what, Gio, why don't you text me what you're saying? I can't read your lips because of your beard. Text me what you're saying. Something more about IST? Look, look. Oh, you can hear Geo? I, I, yeah. Oh, I can't hear Geo. But the ch Oh. One. What's one mean? <laughs> Hold, say the number one if you can hear Geo. Yeah. Oh. Say the... Do the number two if you can... No, I don't want to be number two. Just to... <laughs> okay, so... Everybody can hear Joe but me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I wonder if it's my problem. I don't, but I don't have anything on my com computer. Why can't I hear you? Go. Uh, uh, this is really huh. difficult because you well, can't Well, this hear is going to be <laughs> awkward. Um, uh, why everybody... don't you raise your hand when you want to say something and I'll stop. Do you want to say anything now? Keep keep talk, keep going, keep going. <laughs> mm, so this is a conundrum chat. Uh, Maybe I should second. sign out and sign back in. Yeah, do Let that. Let me try that. Yeah. All right. All right. So it's the Geo Show for three minutes. Let's see what happens. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of a hiccup. That's why we started a little bit late. Plus, I was running a little bit behind schedule, so I do apologize for everybody. But I'm not, in fact, mute. I'm alive and well. Uh, happy to be here. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see if this second attempt works. Device is not connected. There we go. Mic check. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? We're doing it live on Omnibros. I don't think it's working. Uh, can you hear me? Maybe I should restart my computer. Go for it. Everybody can hear you but me. Why don't you just do the show and talk yeah, about okay. whatever? Go ahead. Go, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I'm glad they can hear you. All right, so uh, we're working that out. Uh, we already did the jingle. So, uh, yeah, uh, chat, uh, shoot us with any uh, questions and comments and all that fun stuff that you guys like to uh, ask us. It could be uh, anime, comics, manga, whatever. But just as one host leaves, I'm joined by another. Whoa. Gabe, welcome to a very strange episode. You just missed the hilarity that was the opening for the show. 
All right, let's go back and do it all over again. Let's rewind it. You, you can hear me just fine, right? All right. Plug that in. Ooh, Chris, nice. You can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I all right. pulled so, my freaking cord out of my headphones like a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Jess logged in and he was saying that he couldn't hear me. So I thought I was having issues, but okay. I clearly did not. And the chat was saying they could hear me. So it turns out there's some hiccups on his end. So he can't hear me, but he, they can, but the chat can hear him talk as well. So it's very weird. He logged off. Uh, he's going to, uh, he restarted his computer. He'll be back in a couple minutes. So, all right. So, yeah, if anybody's yeah. ever been here before, uh, <laughs> just having weird issues that he can't quite understand <laughs> with his computer is not uncommon. But we hope he's what a bad Jesus. Uh, we hopefully he shows back up and uh, gets that all fixed up soon. Yeah. Uh, are you, well, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I'm trying to sort through all the stuff I bought, <laughs> uh, comic book wise. So, uh, I just got back home from work and I'm super tired. There it is. I got some stuff all out of order here, but I'm working on all this cool stuff I got. Um, no, I'm doing good, man. Life is great. Uh, awesome. Had a, had a fun Father's Day. I got a Father's Day gift. I'll show you guys uh, a couple of years down the road. Not today, uh, but uh, I'll show you guys in our Omnibros chat. Once it's as it's on the way here. It hasn't been delivered, but you'll get a kick out of it. So gotcha. there's some fun stuff going on. Uh, Christopher, Gio, have you read Drifting Classroom? Picked up the first hardcover volume, and I'm hooked. I only I, I started it. I started that book uh, years ago. I never finished. I only read a couple pages, but I do have Dissolving Classroom, which is from Junji Ito, which is totally different and grosser. I, I don't know, but uh, no, I, I have not read Drifting Classroom yet. It's one of my uh, to do lists. I think it's Dissolving Classroom that I got. It's like a really short, small manga. It's not. It's not the the best. I got it for like five bucks off of Amazon. That's it right there. Yeah. yeah. That one. Oh, there we go. Mike check. Mike check. Hello, hello. You're live on Omni Bros Live. Now we can't hear you. Yeah. Now your mic doesn't work, Jess. Oh my god. <laughs> so I'm gonna translate. Jess is saying. Hi, everybody. I am so happy to be here with everybody today. I am so happy, and I had a wonderful Father's Day with my daughter, and everything is doing great. I love pineapple on my pizza. I do not like pineapple on my pizza. That is a nice. lot. Nice. Nicely done. Thank you. So you can hear us. <laughs> yes. Perfect. So Perfect. what's on your end, then? Everything's fine. All right. You made me believe it was me. I'm like, what the hell? Everything's fine on my end. What's happening? <laughs> This is great. <laughs> All right. Redo. Welcome to Omni Bros Live. Jess goes over here. Good. And I, there we go. Perfect. We're back. Okay. <laughs> There's the normal uh, uh, Brady Bunch lineup right here. <laughs> yeah. For Hollywood, Omni Bros Squares. Uh, Circle gets the square. We um, can talk about halls or reads or previews. What does your. Uh, Pleasure. Oh, look at that. You already got some shade thrown at you. <laughs> Taylor, shut up. <laughs> what? Taylor's so, throwing shade at Jess? That's a that's a we don't grass. mind. What we don't mind. It's part that of the happens. YouTube lifestyle. Yeah. Oh. He's my partner in negativity. <laughs> I don't believe that. I don't believe that Jess is involved in any type of negativity. <laughs> I try not to be. Uh, Joe Chip Drifting Classroom is highly recommended by Riley. Yeah, he did a video on that. Yep. One day I'll read it. One day. I got too much on my plate right now, but one there's, day. There's always too much on our plates. There's always something going on. There's always new books coming out. You got to still get into Dick Fight Island. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know. Maybe one. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll probably review it someday. Maybe on an April Fool's or something like that. For an April Fool's. They just need to rename that to exactly what it is, which is just Beat Off Island. Literally. Goodness. Oh, and goodness. demonetized. Beat Off, Beat Off, Beat Off. It's all right. It's been 10 minutes. That should, uh, if it's in the first 30 seconds or a minute, but it's been 10 minutes. We're good. Right? I think. Maybe. We'll figure it out. Oh, uh, Rick. We, we don't uh, need has the 13 cents we get per episode, anyways. So. <laughs> Jess, have you seen the Catwoman and Bat Pod statue from Queen Studios modeled after Anne Hathaway? I have not. I haven't either. 
never mind. I'm talking about Anne Hathaway being Catwoman and the thing about Batman. Going down on Catwoman. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that became a thing on Twitter. Jesus. It was funny when it happened, but after the 1,000th meme, I got so bored by it. Wait, uh, is this the Batman what, going what? down joke? I, I'm i in uh, physical therapy for my foot because I have something going on, and um, I have plantar fasciitis, so I'm in there, and <laughs> last Friday... One of the physical therapists asked me about it. He said, oh. Jess, did you read that article about Batman and uh, Catwoman in the Harley Quinn show? I said, what? You know about that? And he said, yeah, it really makes me want to watch the show. So I told him about how great the show was and stuff. And yeah. he said, what's the, what's the story? Is Batman a, a, a selfish lover or what? And I'm like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just watch the first two seasons and let it wash over you and laugh and love it. And just love it as much as I do. Yeah. It's, it's always it's always this thing with Batman when it comes down to like 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 legitimately private situations like you know his bat wang and now the Congolingus controversy that's is the most popular you never see anything about hey guys Batman is really great comic book and it's written by Tom King and he's going through all these situations that's all kind of ran in the background by Bane. Oh no, it's really ran over by somebody else. Spoilers. But it's never like that. It's never these great things about what's going on in Batman, the storyline or anything. There's like that. always like, something sexual to it. Yeah, it's always like uh Batman uh you can see his wiener or uh Batman they don't want him to go down on chicks. I don't know. It's always that. It's never anything like comic book related or actual stuff about it. This is this is my kids wear Batman underwear, dang it. We can't be talking about that kind of stuff. Think of the kids. Uh, speaking of the Harley Quinn show, did you know that there's a comic book based on it, Jess? On the actual show? Uh, what now? Oh, there's there's, a, is it there's, out? I think it's coming out soon. It's supposed to be in between seasons two and three of the show. Is it a series or a single... I think it's a series. Let me see if I can find it real quick here. Oh, what did I just see? Oh, there we go. <clears throat> I want that, Ben. That that'll be that'll be a great issue. If it's all similar to the show, that's oh, gosh, I love that show. Yep. Comic. Also. Uh, Lionheart is asking, Jess, did you see the Storm statue by Sideshow came out last week? I did. It's boss. It is very boss. No, would stop that. That's. That, I saw that comment. Over. I disagree as well. <laughs> That's what uh, I had to say to get my figures from Tyler. All the. Is people. that what it took? Was that the negotiation tactic? Yeah, like <laughs> I had to. He he made a ransom video, and my response video to get my figures was to get all my viewers to send the hashtag to his channel, hashtag Harley Quinn is overrated. And that is the only way I got my figures. Wow. He finally sent them. That's a very traumatic event that you had to go through, Jess. I, <laughs> I'm glad to see you making through it Thank so well. Thank you. Yeah, it was traumatic. Thank you very much. Um, uh, some shorty Larson said something. Uh, uh yo, Jess. Oh, they meant that. Brady. It was up at eight twenty-two. Yo, Jess. I read We Live last week. Awesome book. I can't wait for more good stuff. If you watch my most recent video, which went up this morning, it has a ton of good recommendations because I read a ton of good books. And two big sucky losers, but I read a ton of good books. So that's Omni Dog's Vault for more good books. Yeah. Now, now Gio, I don't know if this is going to spoil your haul or anything, but did you were you able to find that We Live hardcover? No, no. I'll, I'll read it digitally because I, I I want to wait for maybe a hardcover in the future. I don't know. 
you you can I uh, well you can I got it from not our sponsor. <laughs> I know I know what you mean. The that other place. I know. Well, no, I didn't get it from the big place. No, the. Uh, would you get it from organic books or cheap? No, 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 the yellow. Yellow snow comp. No, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's where I got. We live. Oh. The eat bang guild. <laughs> why is Batgirl yeah. look so? Why is Batgirl look so traumatic by by all this? So she oh, just walked in on her brain. parents having, you know, making it, <laughs> getting it on. They're totally going at it. Good for them. So this is this comic is supposed to be uh, right after season two. And when is it coming out? Uh, it is coming out in September. That's too long. I want and it now. James Gordon looks really upset by this too. <laughs> James Gordon looks really mad about it. And Batgirl just looks like, oh, my, my dad just found my uh, my OnlyFans. <laughs> that looks great. Thank you, Gio. It says, Harley and Ivy on the road trip of the century following uh, the wedding disaster of the decade. Uh, Quinn and Ivy end up on the run from Commissioner Gordon and the GCPD. But as fun as all that sounds, Ivy still worries over leaving. Uh, do I spoil it? Uh, something yeah, right hell yeah all right leaving kite man at the altar luckily harley's got the perfect scheme to shake her out of her wedding day blues i love this it is written by T. franklin pages. and drawn by max Saren. if the inside art looks like this it'd be it'd, it'd be great because the art on this is really yeah. Cool. yeah i hope it's two thousand pages i, I want I, it to take me six months to read it would anyways we're all got a super backlog. Oh yeah. Jim, uh, Jim Gordon wanted to be with Poison Ivy. Ah, eh, who doesn't? <laughs> uh, yeah, I got. We live uh, at Yellow Snow Comics. If you want to go there and get it, because that's a good comic store. If you can't find it on IST, go ahead and look wherever you need to find it. Yeah, go to Yellow Snow. Just don't eat it. Right. And uh, this is the Catwoman thing that uh, they were mentioning earlier from Queen Studios. Ooh. Yep. Well, she I don't know. good. I don't know if it's a prototype, but if the finished product looks like that, that's going to be worth your money, I think. <laughs> that is a beautiful likeness. How much is that? Oh, whoa. Was it a crazy lot. expensive or what? It's an Australian. Whoa, jeepers. How much a is that in real money? Australian money. Let's see. Uh, Are there any Australians in the chat? I got you. Ooh. I got a currency converter here. Yeah. There's a deposit of 1300 Australian. $3,000, Rick Lightborn says. Yeah, Are you like, doing it, Gia? Three thousand two hundred and something dollars. For that much money, that better actually have uh, what's her face's like locks of her really of her real hair made. Three thousand dollars. A lot of money. Wow. More power to you if you can get it. Yeah, I, mean, I cool. agree. I'd get it if I had that kind of dosh to blow on that. But it'd be me and that statue sleeping in the street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor withered man cool. is sitting underneath the old umbrella that has a bunch of holes in it. And he's like, oh, at least I still got my awesome statue. <laughs> How big is this thing, anyways? Better be like life size for three grand. Uh, shoot. Imagine the shipping of that to America. Oh, I could have just changed the. I'm dumb. Oh, it's all right. Yeah, two thousand nine hundred seventy-eight dollars. ETA September twenty twenty-two. I don't know how much, how big this is, um, but yeah, it better be. Anyways, whatever. Moving on. Well, that's cool. 
That is uh, a very interesting statue that is super expensive. That's cool. But is it better than uh, Beja Thoris? Oh my gosh. Oh, I you really want to see the statue from behind. Jesus. <laughs> to see her feet. Where's the feet? There? Yeah, Deja Thoris has beautiful feet. Oh my gosh. All right, let's do the Catwoman <laughs> thing again. I think Catwoman's wearing boots. Yeah. Boots. Yeah. I'm gonna share this thing again. Everybody <laughs> wanted to see the oh, behind. There, oh, there you go. Here's here's a good workaround somebody put in the chat. Uh, Lionheart is thinking ahead. Jess, buy the statue, <laughs> ship it to Omar. Have Omar bring it to you as a gift when he visits you. I don't think that's a good idea, but knowing Omar, he'd be like, yeah. right in front of Patty. Hey, Jess, here's that statue you sent me that you want me to bring over to you, and you want me to say it was a gift. I I think, well, first of all, Omar would keep it, so there, that's not a good idea. <laughs> Omar's never allowed in my house again, so that's a bad idea. I think Get, sending it to Super Squad D is the idea because Super Squad D uh, is visiting at some point and making me watch Dragon Ball Z. Uh oh, he could bring this. <laughs> Don't do it, Jess. Oh Unless, boy, if it's Dragon Ball Z Kai, you you might be able to get through it. But if it's regular old, just thirty five episodes of nothing yeah. happening, you're gonna hate it so fast. If it's regular DBZ, <laughs> that's happening. Mm -hmm. That's like 300 so I'm, episodes. I'm not that lying. It's literally lying. like you're watching it be like six episodes of them just going, Rah! and it's just like the grass moving and the wind blowing literally for like three episodes. And you're like, what What just happened here? This is, this is going to be your reaction. <laughs> watching Dragon Ball. But if you, if you do get to watch it all the way through, there's a lot of things they cut out, like, you know, like, Weird suicide attempts and going to hell what? and yeah. yeah, in Dragon Ball Z. In Dragon Ball Z, you get to see. I think it's a, a lady that works in a brothel kill herself. Yeah, Taylor's visiting, but I I wouldn't want him to. Yeah, I I wouldn't want to uh, besmirch his reputation. Yeah, and I don't think Patty would believe it coming from him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He'd keep the statue for a year and a half. <laughs> I wonder what else he would make you have to say to get it back. What would that be? <laughs> from from T. Uh, T. Lar Blunt. It'll be like Squirrel Girl is better than Harley Quinn. Oh, oh he. Wow. Yeah, that. Yeah, mm. that'd be a rough one. That would really be a rough one. Oh, Raphael, no, no worries. I'm here oh, assembling a Kalax. Take your time, guys. I love assembling a Kalax and That's filling funny. it up. Yeah, especially when you try and then put the thing right and it doesn't work, so you shake it, and uh, you look at the instructions two times to see what's happening, and you still don't get it, and you're like, but it says it's so simple, and I, why can't I get it through the screw through the hole? Yeah, I love assembling Kalaxes. I, I never had a problem putting those together. I, I always end up breaking some of those wood pegs. Yeah. Good thing there's always extra. Uh, oh. Oh, I see, because they're talking about this comment right here. Yeah. Five guys. <laughs> Five guys, really? That should be the sponsor. What the the, the burger place? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Here's your hamburger, but first you got to eat through this entire bag of French fries first to get to it. No, I want Five Guys Burger. I'm starting. I would make you say that Johnny Cool is a better, more popular channel than Omni Dog's Vault. Johnny it Cool was, is SSD's uh, burn Genshin Impact account. burner account. Yeah, he has like four burner accounts. He would have to make you say uh, Matter Eater, not Matter Eater Lad, uh, Feral Lad. Feral Lad is. Uh, Matter Eater Lad goes down on Matter Eater Lad. No, Pharaoh Lad. That too. Whoever. <laughs> we uh, haven't even gotten to our topic yet. So, oh, have you called or read or previewed anything? We'll be doing some previews. It's kind of a small week, but we'll get into it. Some fun oh, stuff. is it? Okay. I think so. 
Am I looking at the right week? I hauled a small haul, but a good haul. That's the best kind of haul. Yeah. Because I'm winding down. I still have to collect this in hardcover. So awesome, not, BTRD. Anything I've continued, anything I have a series of, I will continue in whatever format it is, but nothing new, no new series. Uh, and I needed to get all of the Batman Judge Dredd books. I only had the very first one when I did my uh, video on Judge Dredd. So now I have them all. And I hunted down and found, for a pretty darn good price, coup d'etat. Oh, yeah. We were talking about that not long ago. Right. Sweet. I had to know where it. they had it, the beginning of it, in the sleeper uh, omnibus. And I had to know the, the rest of the story. And it's in this. It was pretty tricky to find. It was a $13 $13 cover price, and I got it for about $22, so I think that's fair. That's not bad. No big deal. Yeah. So I I, I admit I went over cover, but... Oh, no. There's the end of the world. Oh, God. Yeah. How dare you? No slippers. <laughs> that's not too bad for that book, which how, how hard it is to find. So, yeah. That's my haul this week. Oh, my God. I can't believe you, di you, you didn't get it for less than cover. It's, oh, it's only half off or nothing. I suck. Oh, the humanity. Oh, the humanity. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> um, Dare you. I think Gabe and I hold oh. something similar. I want to see if if we uh, show the same thing. All right. Let's do this. So yeah. let's go. On, on, I got on a hunch. Count, on a count of three. Yeah. Okay, I'll count. One, two, three. We did get it. Wow. Yeah, yeah baby. Fist of the North Star. Yep. That's right. It's all it's all about uh this gay superhero from Canada and Alpha <laughs> Flight. It's, no. it's not. No. I, <laughs> If I would believe that, I guess. <laughs> Fake manga, real manga, gay superhero from Canada. It, and and, and, and me. him fisting as he goes to Dick Punch Island. I would read that. James Abel, I don't have any burner accounts. Those are all people that make up their names. Yeah. They're fans <laughs> of mine. Those are super fans. Oh, you, Gio, you want me to, you want me to talk about uh, yeah, uh, the Fisting your, and Star? Do your whole. All right. So we'll do my haul real quick and a little bit about this with Gio. So I'll, I'll stay really quick on the uh, Fist of the North Star just so that I can actually hand that over to Gio, who I know is way more involved and has better explanations to talk about it. But I my only experience with Fist of the North Star is I mentioned it before. I was dating a girl at one time and she was like, have you seen Fist of the North Star? And I was like, I was like, what? 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 I know who North Star is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But I didn't know anything about this Fist of the North Star anime. And we, we watched it for a little bit, and it was just like this crazy, just cyberpunky, post apocalyptic battle happening where people blood is boiling and exploding out of their bodies when you cut you and, and stuff like that. Uh, and it was something that for the longest time, with these, like, this kind of, I don't want to say like reemergence of manga or this like uh, new popularity of manga, because that's definitely not true. But the way that these last couple of years, the way that manga has really seems to have been, and anime has kind of really taken over uh, the, the uh, like Geo and uh, Riley and Lou's kind of uh, that age bracket, and that age group, where mm -hmm. that's this is mangas and, and anime are all the things that really kind of show up in school, like scholastic fairs and, and things like that, is they mm -hmm. wipe out. Uh, My Hero Academia, and they wipe out One Piece and all that kind of stuff. So with, what has been a new emergence lately has been these classic animes or these classic mangas getting these really nice hardcover treatments, uh, starting with like Berserk and Helsing and uh, Blade of the Immortal. And the, the kind of newest kind of uh, entry into that is this awesome looking Fist of the North Star. And I, I flipped through it real quick. I read like a chapter or two. 
and it's just it's 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 beautiful artwork. Again, these mangas are just incredible. They're not, they're not always like uh, slightly painted like this. Most of the time, it's just I'm gonna try and flip to a page. It's not crazy gnarly. Um, it's it's usually black and white, but it's just beautiful black and white artwork. Uh, mm -hmm. Going through here with a huge amount of popularity, and I'm on. I, that's basically all I can really say about it. I'm on again. I, when it's Gio's turn for his entry into this week's halls, I'm sure he could do a way better job presenting. I'll try. And this, oh, dude, there's no way you could do <laughs> any worse than what I I'm like, oh, it's cool. No, the guy I got bullets on mind. his chest, and it's keep in mind, of I, old video game. I, I haven't read all of it, so. Uh, so what, what else? else? Got? I got some. Bitch and ass comic books, of course. Uh, single issues. I've been going on some more crazy single issue hunts, especially when it comes down to my boy Danny Ketch, uh, Ghost Rider. Uh, some cool stuff here. This is a great uh, John nice. Romita Jr. cover. I love that stuff. Um, again, going, going through some more. I showed you guys a little bit last time some Marvel Comics Presents. And I got some really awesome. Again, it's Ghost Rider versus Wolverine storyline running through here. I'll just flip these real fast because it, it's a lot. And I'm not going to bore anybody with my uh, single issues because it's not a bunch of hardcover omnibuses that I can only spend nah. half price on. Don't worry about it. But it's some <laughs> dope going. stuff in here. Wait till I get into some really cool covers on here uh, coming up as well. There's a early Rob Liefeld. Look at that. Look at early Rob Liefeld doing Wolverine and my nice. boy Ghost Rider there. Super cool stuff. Uh, also, Sam Keith. I showed you guys last week. I got some Sam Keith books. And I got a lot more. I got two copies of this 86 because this is the first full appearance of Cypher or Cyber, who is uh, the only person that Wolverine is fearful of. And it's just an awesome, great story. I have the trade paperback for this uh, called Bloodlust uh, from Sam Keith. Sam Keith actually uh, signed my copy of my trade paperback and did little doodles on the front cover of it for me. This is a great Peter David uh, storyline. But also I got look at this. This is some this is so cool. Sam Keith, again, awesome Sam Keith doing Ghost Rider and Cable. Nice. He does a gnarly looking Cable. Even his all shadow Wolverine is probably one of the coolest looking Wolverines because anything that Sam Keith does is awesome, especially Wolverine. Uh, here's like some uh, crackhead, uh, meth addict looking uh, Wolverine <laughs> with a couple knives. That's all super scary. <laughs> Don't want to run into that dude in, you know, in, in a parking lot at night. Yeah. This is the stuff I really fall in love when it comes down to Sam Keith. It's all this like twisty tears and fraying of the clothes. Like that's just that's just insane. That guy's a monster to be able to go through this kind of stuff mm -hmm. and put in that kind of detail. Again, some more cable ghost rider. This is awesome stuff, dude. This is just I can't be happier with this kind of stuff. It's great. Love the artwork. This is kind of a regular, just old cover, but it's still Sam Keith, so it's awesome. And this one's great. Issue one hundred. Issue 100 is one of the best covers they ever did for Marvel Comics Presents. Look at that. That's gnarly. And one of the other things that you guys know I love, and we've been, we've been talking about it a little bit, is the Spectre. And I'm kind of going to start falling into the Spectre hole. I can feel it. Um, Spectre hole, that sounds bad. It almost sounds like Spectre hole. But with that said, uh, I got this Day of Judgment set of, tra of issues. Ooh. And, and the thing about this Day of Judgment is this is the series. I'm going to kind of pause for dramatic effect. This is the series that's most important to myself because this is a series where the specter is dun, 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 dun. This is how Jordan becomes the specter. Ah. So, again, this is the time where in my frame, my introduction into comics, uh, this is a little bit later on. This explains the storyline. But when I was first got into comics, it was how Jordan was a crazy monster, psychopath, killer, who after the death of Superman uh, and the loss of Coast City, just broke and snapped and went nuts and tried to recreate his whole city using the power ring. And, of course, the power ring only has a certain amount of power and energy. Thank you, Rick. Uh, I do. This stuff does need to be an Omni and I, or, or some kind of collection or trade paperback or epic collection or something. We get z we get zero, zero uh, Ghost Rider stuff. I, there was a Marvel Masterworks that came out I think like a week or two ago, but that's like uh, that's a hundred dollars for like five issues, and I'm 
that's that's a hard that's a hard pass. But so when I was reading Ghost uh, Green Lantern, how Jordan did this big crazy murder spree of Ola and all the Guardians. Spoilers. Uh, and that's when Kyle came around, and he be, and then Hal Jordan became the Spectre, and there was this whole real cool thing with the Spectre. So to me, Hal Jordan was always the Spectre, and Kyle was always um, Green Lantern, and then Green Lantern Rebirth kind of recycled that idea and kind of brought that out as well. But I also got this really cool uh, uh, Midnight Massacre Night Stalkers book too. So lots of cool stuff. Um, I got some more like single issues. I don't want to get too involved with it. Uh, Cause I don't know, you know, not everybody likes to hear me talk about uh, single issues, but they're all kind of just mixed in. Um, I got a bunch, some new ones and some old ones I already had. I've been filling in my Ghost Rider run, and I've also been spending the last couple of weeks bagging and boarding all these. I've been putting them all into nice my lights. Yeah. I got all my cool '90s books in my lights and fullbacks. Those so, look great, by the way. Super dude, there's nothing better than seeing these things in my lights. It's, it's the yeah. clearest, strongest. These things make an awesome comic look even better. So that's really been an interesting time with what I've been doing, doing that kind of stuff as well. Um, and then I'll just get it out of the way real fast with reads. Uh, all, everything Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider, yeah. Ghost Rider. Getting into the Danny Ketch stuff again, reading this stuff from way back in the day. Um, and again, these are all just beautiful in my lights. Great fun yeah. stories. Uh, introduction to new characters. Uh, issue one has one of my favorite things of all time, of, of all time and space, and that's ninjas. You can't go wrong with ninjas. You got Ghost Rider fighting ninjas. I am there. So hmm. that's what this whole first storyline is about. It's him fighting ninjas and cool stuff like that. That's been my reads and stuff. So I'm done with everything today. We'll just get into previews, everybody. No, I'm going to hear Gio talk more about uh, Fist of the North Star because I know he's got more to say. And I am super interested, and everybody else should be too. Um, well, before I do, bam, let me show you the haul. I somebody commented earlier that they got um, Gigantomaxia, and I brought this because I also got Gigantomaxia. So this is from the late. It's super weird to say, but the late uh, Kentaro Miura. So I wanted to get what was available or in stock from his work, aside from Berserk. So I got this, which was done to celebrate, I think it was the 20th anniversary of the either Giga or Young Animal or some magazine. And he drew this special one shot with giant monsters and, and people fighting. And it's, it's awesome. Not the greatest story. But still, it's Muta drawing, and his artwork is just badass. I love that. That's great looking. Yeah. Look at this monster, gigantic thing. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, yeah, I don't want to flip too much. But yeah. Oh, Chris. Yeah. There you go, buddy. I saw your comment. And I thought, I, I better uh, show this off. So, another book I got is Pokemon Adventures Volume 8. Collection. Look how big that thing is. Go, go, yeah. Power Rangers, man. Wow. Got to catch them all. Uh, yep. You got it. So, this collects uh, the original volumes 22, 23, and 24. Essentially, uh, Leaf Green and Fire Red era. Now, let me ask you, uh, I, I played Pokemon when it very, very first came out. I was like 17, 18 years old when it first came out as, as a card game. Was it? And then I watched the, the, uh, the TV show for a while. But what, was, what, what came out first? Was it the manga? And then there was everything kind of based off of that? Or like, where does the manga come in place of like? Uh, no, no, no. The video game was always first. And they okay. soon adapted the manga a couple years later and the anime. <clears throat> Uh, but it was the game first. Okay. That but, was the first time I bought a Nintendo Color or a Game Boy Color. It was the Color, yellow yeah. one. Whoa, it was really? the yellow one. <laughs> Has a couple colored pages right there. Wow. So if you like Pokemon, I think this is the best material to read aside from playing the games. It's a little bit more edgy, a little bit more... Uh, Dark and twisted in certain areas. It's a lot. It's a lot of fun. Great for all ages. But 
I've been a fan since the games first started, first uh, came out a long time ago. So, yeah, I love the uh, Pokemon Adventures line. And unfortunately, it's ending with Volume 10. Uh, the manga is still ongoing, but the I believe after Volume 10, the stories that are out are not uh, interconnected as the, these are. So that's why they're stopping. Maybe they'll do another series of collector's editions later on because these sell pretty freaking well. I see them all over Walmart all the time. Are, they, are you able to still pick up like Volume 1? Yeah, yeah, they're okay. going in and out of print, out of stock, but they, they are, I think they're going to be evergreen because it's uh, this is a pretty popular franchise, obviously. Um, but yeah, Pokemon Adventure. I got B Stars Volume 12. Whoa, I know how much is a B Stars. I love this manga, uh, one of my favorites. If you have not uh, been keeping up and you only watch this, the anime, I think in a couple of weeks it's going to debut and sometime in July. And that will cover up to from volume mid volume six all the way to almost all of volume 11. So if you watch that and you want to continue the story with the manga, you get this volume after season two. How many episodes are in the season of Beastars? Beastars has been 12 <clears throat> episodes per season so far. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. It's not like 400 One Piece episodes or something. Yeah. yeah there's or when Jess goes through Dragon Ball Z, it's a 37 issue or episode before they get into the big fight. <laughs> uh, yeah, Dragon Ball Z was 300 episodes. I don't know if you're going to be able to watch all that, Jess. I know Maybe. you're uh, not too thrilled about that. It's 400 episodes, and then he misses the spirit bomb. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, this yes. is the North Star, this extremely uh, action-packed manga with Kenshido, one of the uh, beloved protagonists from back in the day, late 80s action goodness. And this just inspired a whole generation of creators, not in Japan, not just in Japan, but worldwide, and especially comic book creators here in, in America. And it's it's essentially like your Mad Max, but up to eleven with brutality and uh, new people. I mean, look, look at that. It's That's really awesome. Cool. Yeah, the bad guy here. Uh, you can't draw genitalia, so he has no uh, wiener on this manga. That happens. Yep. But this is one of my favorite uh, scenes right there. He, he would totally be like a winner on the Dick Fight Island. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh. Um, see, there we go. I We're not going to get demonetized or anything because there's nothing to show. So there you go. He is He's, totally uh, unique. Missing, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But people, I mean, I see this a lot when the Helsing hardcovers were starting to come out. And a lot of people that have never read that stuff... Um, they saw how excited everyone else was for Helsing and this huge hype formed over that title. Mm -hmm. And when they started reading it, they're like, oh, this isn't, this isn't great. And we were going like, yeah, Helsing has never been this masterpiece, but still it's really fun with great artwork and a lot of badass uh, fights and all that stuff. This, I'm not comparing Helsing to Fist of the North Star, don't get me wrong, but a lot of people will go into the hype and want to read something like this and will want to expect this uh, glorious masterpiece of sequential art. And in some form it is because it's quite legendary. It, you got video games, movies, uh, anime, all that stuff out of this. But don't go in thinking you're going to get like this magnum opus. Just have fun with it because it's an apocalyptic action-packed storyline. Humanity has been mostly wiped out, so it's sort of this desert utopia uh, scenario. Um, and uh, you follow Kenshiro and uh, fighting all these bad guys and all that stuff with the uh, Divine Fist of the North Star and all that stuff. And the, uh, the anime is beautiful. It's that 80s anime where it's still everything is hand-drawn and it's, it's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, I, I haven't... I've only read bits and pieces of it so this is going to be the first time diving in 
uh, to fully read Fist of the North Star. So, yeah, I'll get back to everybody and uh, give more thoughts on uh, Volume 1 and moving forward on all the, that stuff. Uh, real quick, uh, some great conversations in the chat that I got to highlight. But first, uh, Geo Gabe, has no one explained DBZ Kai to Jess? Yeah, we talked about it earlier. Um, I don't know if he explained it to him. I think he fell asleep. But Dragon Ball Z Kai is is just it has all the fat cut out. You know, it's it's not forty episodes before something happens. It's like every episode is great. But yeah, it it's one of those things where like me personally, as like not as a purist, but I'm the kind of person who doesn't really like the cliff note versions of things. Whoa, uh, I, I prefer to watch all the filler stuff just so I don't miss anything and. Yeah. Awesome discussion in the chat. People talking about amazing 90s books that need to get collected. And in Man 40, I have to I have to uh, co-sign on all of this stuff. Danny Catch Ghost Rider, Mark Spector, 90s FF, Danny O'Neill, Daredevil, Bill Matlow, Alpha Flight. Lots and lots of stuff that's just completely being disregarded from the 90s. We need some epic collections for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, James wants a beautiful B, B Star manga box set. Yeah, they have one in Japan. It looks really, really cool. I don't know if we're going to get that, but we'll see. And here's something for Jess some Sleepwalker and Darkhawk epics would be nice. <laughs> right, Jess? Yeah. Darkhawk? Love Darkhawk. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Let's do it. What do we got next? Uh, reads. Jess, you read anything? Jess fell asleep because we talked about manga for more than 40 seconds. <sighs> What's that now? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. People wanted right. to hear me talk about this damn yes. book. I apologize. Gio, we got to set up like a, a time to read it together and then be able to come back and kind of just get like a review going because this is only the first volume out of like what? I think there's like. It's not, it's not be, a big manga. It's not a no, manga. but it's probably going to be like 17 or 18 hardcovers. Yes. Give me more. Reads. Just what you read, bro. Uh, <clears throat> I just put out a... Uh, what is that noise? Cut it out. Not is me. That, is that your phone yeah, address? Me, yeah. Uh, or your messenger? It turns on when I... Um, Somebody's messaging? Yeah, okay, I turn no. that off. It clicks on yeah. automatically when I restart. It's chatterbait. I made a whole video on all these <laughs> books, so if you want to see the in-depth review, go to my latest review on Omnidog's Vault. Yes, sir. I saw that video. Good good stuff. Thank you. What? I saw that video. Good oh, stuff. thank you. We Live, fantastic book. Yellow Snow Comics is where you can get it. Oh God, you're gonna bait me again with this. Damn it! Oh, Go for it. This book is unbelievable. Uh, it looks awesome. Dystopian world. Aliens are gonna save us uh, by implanting the arm band on five thousand children that connects to their DNA, so it can't be stolen. And it's the journey of four of the characters having to deal with beasts like this that all of a sudden show up. Um, That's awesome. Oh, thanks, the Collector. <clears throat> and they have to get to the um, extraction point where the aliens will take the 5,000 children with the armbands. And it's the journey of these children, <clears throat> uh, these four three children and one tamed beast to get to the destination point and what they have to go through to get there. The art, <clears throat> excuse me, is fantastic. The story is fantastic. This is easily in my top three of the year so far. Easily. Nice. Uh, here's this boss picture. Yeah, that looks really cool. When you showed that last week, I'd, I'd love that. Oh, did I already show this? Yeah, we, uh, okay, you talked about last week. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, no, but you can keep talking about it. <laughs> Did I talk about Generation X? This is the, yeah, you talked about that also. Did I talk about bad reception? Yes, you did. I don't know. I don't think you did. I, I, no, I don't. No, no. <laughs> no, no. 
that reception is really boss because uh, it's all about social media and the world's biggest star. Think of like Beyonce times 20. Her name's Gaia and she's having a wedding. Uh, it's by Juan Doe. The art is really cool and the story's great. It's all about social media and they decide to have a uh, social media free wedding. You have to turn in your cell phones, very limited number of people. They're on an island uh, with no cell reception. There's a, a jamming device. So if anybody sneaks anything in, no pictures allowed. And somebody is out to kill everyone in the wedding party. That's Ooh. like when I went to go see a Dave Chappelle comedy show. You got to turn in your cell phones. They, they lock them away in cases and stuff. Oh, well, they I, I don't want to spoil it by saying what happens to the cell phones but it's epic 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 it's great i think this is in my top four now so i have four top books Ooh. this is the other four is that uh aftershocks aftershock oh, it is yeah okay aftershock these smaller companies are really just like uh pushing the envelope and like making names for themselves yeah um this is an older book but it's available on IST. I encourage everyone to get it. This is book two. It's The Uncanny by Andy Diggle. Uh, this guy can't touch you, and Good. he gets all your powers um, and knowledge. So if, like, you're a ninja, if he touches you, he can become a ninja for a while. And he runs into another person that has interesting powers, not the same power set. Uh, but he finds out there are other people like him. He gets hired to do a job with others like him. And it has about 14 twists and turns as they nice. try to discover the source of uh, their powers. I'm sorry, and, did you say there was ninjas in this? Um, or that was just an example? That was just an example. Oh. I don't think they're real ninja. Uh, maybe in the first book. Um, there are a lot of assassins in it. So is that a werewolf? It's or a wolf a, that haunts their werewolf. dreams. That's awesome. It turns that, out they all haunt uh, the same dream. They all have the same dream. Is that werewolf so, and ninja? The it, no. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Uh, it's by Andy Diggle. Volumes one and two are on IST, and it's great. Very cool. Rogue Planet by Cullen Bunn. Is a high concept story, sci fi high concept of a sentient planet that is not in orbit anywhere. It travels around by itself. Uh, it contains incredible treasures on, on it. So, if, uh, like a shuttlecraft lands on there with the crew wanting to gather the uh, treasures. Uh, but the problem is there's poisonous vapors and sharp acidic rocks and a tribe of people on there on the planet that want to sacrifice the crew to their God. And it's what they, it turns out in, from a, from a treasure seeking mission to a survival mission. And it's got a lot of really interesting, imaginative, um, very imaginative, um, scenes in it and concepts, and I, I really dug this. I can I can see how maybe it might be somebody not somebody's cup of tea, but it was definitely my cup of tea. Um, I, I think this is one of the better things Cullen Bunn has written. Um, it's uh, really good. I dug it. And then the last two make it into my five top five and six by Tom Taylor, Hellblazer, Rise and Fall, and Suicide Squad, Bad Blood. Nice. These are awesome books. Yeah, I love the Derek Robertson art on the yeah. Hellblazer book. He it's is amazing. really great. Um, this, uh, Tom Taylor nails John Constantine. He Finally, has, a Black Label book that's not Batman. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> he gets Constantine. Um, Constantine's story is a little different in this, but uh, Constantine ends up buddying up with the devil 
because somebody has stolen the devil's wings, uh, a demon that Constantine let loose when he was a child. And um, it's a great story. I Tom Taylor absolutely nails John Constantine, which is great. After a long drought, I got Cy Spurrier and uh, Tom Taylor that know how to write Constantine. I guarantee any Constantine fan is going to like this book. It's a nice hardcover. I might need to grab it just for the Derek Robertson art. The art's great. And yeah. this book is awesome, not just because it has Harley Quinn in it. She really doesn't have that big of a role. Oh, I'll get it. Bystander for comedy to relief. Uh, but the plot really quickly is that somebody has bought the Suicide Squad. This guy's in charge now. Um, he, and he, Amanda Waller's no longer in charge. He sends them on a mission to stop uh, another supergroup called the Revolutionaries. And uh, it turns out the person that bought the Suicide Squad is uh, a billionaire jerk off that wants uh, destruction and power, seeking power. <clears throat> and they all band together to go after him. And it's mayhem and funny and really, really well written, as you expect from Tom Taylor. Uh, I can't say enough about this book. It's the best suicide book I've read since probably Ostrander invented it. Or if he didn't invent it, he wrote it great. Um, so Harley does ha Harley's mostly comedy relief, but... Harley's written well. There, it is possible, as we've seen in the uh, second half of DC Rebirth, to not get Harley, but that Tom Taylor gets her and writes her really well. And uh, all the characters, there's an awful lot of characters in this, and they're all given time enough uh, for you to care about them. They're, they all... Get their chance for you to get hooked on them in case any one of them gets off. You will be sorry. Um, it, it's very, very interesting and well written. And besides great twists and turns, um, somebody tells Batman off in a way that you've never seen before. And it's awesome. It's just amazing. And the art's great. I love this book. So this makes it five and six into my top six. I have six wow. so far. The year is half over, too. Yeah, I'm going to have to make that video in a week. Uh, real quick, Oxmead Pete is back. Oh, Hi, Pete. How's your milk? Did you get it right fresh? <laughs> Why'd you need so much milk? Do you have a lot of kids? Maybe he just likes milk. Strong yeah, bones and like strong teeth. Yeah. Bruce Wayne did not buy Suicide Squad. No, it is a different billionaire. Is Jeff Bezos the billionaire? Uh, Jeff Bezos is actually featured in Bad Reception. This uh, other book that I read, where is that? Mm. Featured not his likeness, but his name is brought out a lot. Oh. Interesting. As the one who wants pictures of the wedding. And you're not, there's only an official photographer and, oh, there's <laughs> milk bottles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, Bezos is mentioned as the guy that wants um, uh, pictures of the uh, wedding for like $10 million or something. Does, does any adult still drink milk or does that get cut off after you're like, you're like seven, eight years old? I haven't had milk in so long. I put a little bit of half and half in my iced coffee this afternoon, but that's about it. I mean, even like cereal, it's like, uh, you know what tastes better than milk in my cereal? Almond milk or, you know. Yeah. Oh, almond. yeah. But that's not real milk. That's not like dairy milk. Right. That's not like, oh, I'm going to just chug milk right out the gallon of the bottle. I used to do that. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh... Yeah, I agree with Rafael Miranda's comment about the revolutionaries. I, I wouldn't use the word woke, but I agree with that. They, they're they freedom fighters. Um, done right. Done right, yeah. Not not a big fan of that woke word because of the connotation of it. But Oh, boy. 
That's but like you, that's your point is well taken, Raphael. Yeah. They, that's a can that's of worms right. you don't want to open. I also like his uh, comment here of uh, where'd they go? They disappeared. There it is. So many uh, comments. Awesome. Almond or cashew milk? Mm, cashew milk is great. Almond for me. Almond is mostly water. You got to shake it. No, no. Look at how it's made. I know, but I, no, I like cashew it. is more nutritious because you get more of the cashew real protein in it. Cashew goodness. Yeah, it's more cashewy. Uh, maybe they do like <laughs> pistachio milk. I like. Candice Duke is lactose intolerant. Milk is murder. <laughs> Is it is it the milk that's murder or is it the gas that that's caused by your lactose intolerance that's murder? Because I eat a lot of protein and there's times where I got to like cram like a hundred grams of protein late at night, you know, before bedtime or whatever, and nobody wants to be my friend after that. Huh. Protein farts me, are gnarly. Me, 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 I. Uh, I do have two observations that I wanted to make, and yes, sir, for. People watching, uh, if you were intrigued by Rogue Planet, I recommend a mobile game for your cell phone called Lifeline. Um, it's a text, text-based game where you are here on Earth and you get a message from the only survivor of a space crash in a moon out there in space. And the astronaut is texting you, and there's more to the planet than meets the eye at first. And it depend the story unfolds depending on how you answer or his request, and and you talk to him back and forth. And it's kind of real time based, where he'll tell you, "Oh, let me go to this place, and I'll check back in an hour." An hour passes, and then you get a notification if it as if it were a text message. But it has vibes similar to uh, Rogue Planet, where uh, Jess was talking about the book, and I immediately remembered, oh, this reminds me of Lifeline. And so I wanted to ch uh, recommend that. Uh, so it's all text-based? Yeah, yeah. Because you play the role of the human uh, over at NASA or whatever, and you're receiving the text from the astronaut, and you're helping him. Like, he's all alone in that moon and telling you, what do I do? And you uh, either write to him or there's like multiple uh, answers that you can pick and stuff like that. And it has multiple uh, endings based on, <laughs> no, it's not a scam or a virus. Uh, it's, <laughs> fun. It's, it's fun. You can find it on the App Store. I do, I do recommend it. Okay, hang on. Let me get to where I'm writing down ideas for games. Uh, also, and... you were talking about Suicide Squad. I recommend watching the Suicide Squad animated movie because I also think that's oh. one of the best things since uh, Oh Ostrander, in my opinion. What was it? It was the first one. What was it called? What was the subtitle to it? Um, the animated movie for Suicide Squad is called Hell to Pay, and it's based on the former DC animated movie universe. So it's set in that connected world. And I thought that was really good. I I really enjoyed that movie a lot. It okay. also has a comic book sequel that you can get the uh, trade paperback if you want. What's the game called? Lifeline. Lifeline? Yeah. Okay. And the Suicide Squad what? is called Hell to Pay, and the comic sequel is named the same way hell to pay i haven't seen the hell to pay suicide squad but the uh, batman assault on arkham oh that's also good too that is i because i haven't seen hell to pay but that assault on arkham is like the coolest suicide yeah. squad I've that seen. one is based on the arkham games i love harley in it like she's like super crazy and that was sexy R fun. that was r-rated harley before the tv show yeah like she was like you know hooking up with dudes and stuff like it was great like super violent really fun stuff uh yep yeah that's that's a good good show cool i'm a, i'm up for watching that oh you that's... haven't seen assault on arkham yet jess i'm sorry you haven't seen assault on arkham i haven't oh I watched the shorts 
just leave leave the, the show now and go watch it. No, come on. I watched the shorts. That was good. It's fun. It's uh it's set before uh the first Arkham game, I believe, uh, in the timeline. And um they or after the second, I, I don't know. They have to go into was it to what were they going in for, uh Gabe? It was um, something with Riddler, right? Dang it, because I know she runs into, she runs into the Joker, and that's when they like they kind of like break up and like, it goes into like this crazy fit. This is the Arkham? Uh, the Arkham one, yeah. They, I think it's something about Riddler. They have to go in and get his cane because it has something that Amanda Waller wants or whatever. Um, but uh, the Batman isn't featured as heavily because it's more about the squad and, and you follow Harley and, and Deadshot, all that stuff. Uh, I It's really badass. I do recommend watching it. Awesome. I will. And, and uh, Hell to Pay, too. But yeah. I have a lot of movies already. I have no problem adding yeah. one more to the list. <laughs> Is it on HBO now? I think it's on Max. Let me take a look. Oh, HBO Max. Sorry. Yeah. Check HBO Max. Let's see. That's not it should be. Yes, just tell me what it's on. <laughs> but these are short movies. They're like 70 minutes, so you can watch them real quick. I think. Uh, Suicide Squad, Hell to Pay is on HBO Max. Assault on Arkham is not. <clears throat> Boo. But Hell to Pay is really good. I like it. Amanda Waller forms a special squad uh, to retrieve a mystical object. Uh, Bronze Tiger's in it. Uh, it's really badass. I do recommend watching it. Okay. I will watch it. I have watched a lot of stuff on HBO now. Wait, I think it is on HBO yeah. Max. Is it? Let's see. So. On, oh yeah, it is. It is. It is. My bad. My bad. Because yeah. it's listed under Batman, of course. What right. assault on Arkham? Assault yeah. on Arkham. Yeah, it's called oh. Batman Assault on Arkham. When oh, the government yeah. creates a group of supervillains with a code name Suicide Squad to break into Arkham Asylum to free the Joker, and then Batman becomes involved because, of course, because yeah. Batman. Yeah, but both are R rated. R rated, I think. Yeah, they're. Uh, Pretty uh, <laughs> mature takes on uh, Suicide Squad, so don't watch cool. with the kiddos. I'll watch both of those. That's how it I should be I think, for something like Suicide Squad. It should be a little adult. It should be, you know, have some fun on it. Yep. So there you go. Both are on there. Uh, one is an hour and fifteen minutes, and the other one is uh, shoot, I lost it. Probably around that. That's time. cool. I'm ready. It's a good week for me to do it. An hour and 26 minutes is the other one. Yep. I just have one doctor's appointment every day this week. That's it. And if you like Hell to Pay, the sequel is written by... Um, shoot, who did the... Oh, Jeff Parker. Yeah. Oh. It was... Yeah, as soon as it takes place immediately after the film uh, for 12 issues. And that was released back in 2019. Is that collected? Yeah, and one trade paperback. What's trade it called? Paperback. <laughs> Suicide Squad, Hell to Pay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Suicide Squad, Hell to Pay. All right. So you want to guys take a look at some, uh, some previews that's coming out this week? Let's do it. What do we got? Let's see. Whoa. All right, so let's take a look. We're going to start off this week. Uh, of course, this is the week of June 23rd, so these are books are going to be uh, released Wednesday. Of course, they go up uh, a little bit earlier tomorrow at noon. On uh, InStockTrades.com, uh, Image Comics this week we got Family Tree Volume Three, mm -hmm. and uh, Nomen Omen Volume Three as well. Nomen Omen. 
Uh, Marvel. Uh, we're skipping right down to Marvel already. Yeah, no Dark Horse or IDW. <laughs> uh, we got Return of the Valkyries uh, trade paperback. Miles Morales Ultimate End uh, graphic novel trade paperback. And looks for the kiddos, I think. What's in here? Is it for the kiddos? Is this like an original graphic novel? Because that image is actually from... Well, no, this is the actual Bendis. series. Yeah, so it's... it's Bendis. Maybe it's a smaller format. Yeah. One through twelve of that, and uh, Marvel's uh, Masterworks with Uncanny X Men Volume Thirteen, and the variant cover. So this is uh, X Men Two Ten. Starts off with it looks like from the cover, and Silk of the Spider Verse Tree Paperback Volume Two, Darth Vader uh, by Greg Pak Volume Two as well. And Star Wars Legends uh, Epic Collection, Old Old Republic on here. Nice. And everybody's new favorite villain from uh, Falcon Winter Soldier, John Walker, U.S. Agent, American Zealot. Come uh, in, boy. Can, you, can you highlight, uh, sorry, oh. after we highlight that, can you highlight the soap book? Yeah, I want to get that. That's something I started, so I have to finish it. Oh, this is a U.S. Agent series from last year. One through five. I don't like that shield. Kind of crappy looking. The suit's a little weird looking. Looks like he's like wearing jeans or something with a, a button-up shirt. Yeah, what's us? Right? Because if I see that coming at me, because we're fighting, I'm like, what, us? Us versus them? versus them. <laughs> or maybe it's upside down. It's really SN. Or 5N. Or 5N. Bingo. <laughs> SN. He wants your serial number. Uh, Silk. Silk out the yeah. Spider-Verse. Because I think this is stuff that's already been collected? or It's Spider-Man and Silk. Uh, oh, yeah. oh. Spider-Fly Effect. I remember we already had that. Before. Yeah, looking yeah. for uh, Spider Woman Alpha, Spider Gwen uh, mm -hmm. from the year 2015 B, uh, seven through eight. Silk also from the the world of 2015 B, seven through eight. Uh, Spider Woman six through seven. And Spider Woman Omega. Okay, I already have all those. Yeah, gonna be a pass, unfortunately. I love you, Silk, but. I already have all those. Yeah. If you have it, you don't need it. If you don't have it, there you go. Yeah. We do need a Silk Omnibus, though. I'd get that. Totally. And a reprint of X-Men Epic Collection uh, Mutant Genesis. Nice. Uh, Boom Studios this week. Is this not in alphabetical order anymore? I don't know. Uh, Dune. Volume 1 hardcover. And uh, here's all the kind of back half stuff we'll take yeah. a look at. You guys, give me a break on this. I'm not going to say anything. I'm Please. Gonna be quiet. Now we're just going to look at the comics. <laughs> See if there's anything here we can highlight real fast, though. Look at, look at that. Look at that. Look at that dinosaur. I'm sorry, yeah. guys. Dino <laughs> hitters. Amazing. Holy smokes. Can you highlight that for me? I wonder if he right. did this all, all, all screwed up on acid. <laughs> Dino hitters, baby. Nice. That is amazing. Look at the, the look how tiny that baseball is. I feel cool. I feel really glad for this T-Rex, who usually gets kind of you know uh made fun of for having really really small yeah. arms. Good for and him. Here he is as a pitcher. Yeah, sold out stadium. Uh 1930s looking stadium with uh, racist baseball managers. Yeah. What about here? Hammy Sosa. <laughs> oh, that is terrible. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Hammy Sosa. That's almost like Peter Porker in the spider yep. ham. Yep. Only in this version, he doesn't use a corked bat. So. Or Ooh, steroids. Yeah, with the baseball knowledge. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> 
I do like the dinosaur, though. That's fun. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> How is the D Rex supposed to throw? I don't know. I don't think it's going to go past maybe three miles per hour. No, no. We're not going to talk about the, this poor dinosaur's shortcomings. He's able to do it. He's good. More power <laughs> to him. He's overcoming his shortcomings and is becoming probably one of the best pitchers there are in dino in fuzzy baseball. Oh, yeah. Geeky Fab Five. That's what they call the Omni Bros. Thank you. What else? Nope. Nope. Lots of books for young readers this week. So yeah, like this one, uh, Silver Scream, Inked and Blood. Get that for your young reader. Yeah. Ice Nine Kills. The Kitchen Witch. It's pretty wholesome. Uh, Kyle's little sister, let's not talk anymore. That's how I feel. <laughs> Long distance. <laughs> the Loud House. Magic Tree House. Oh, here we go. Monsterverse. Titanology. Ooh. Godzilla and King Kong. Nice. Mythics. Nugget and Dog. Nugget and Dog. All ketchup, no mustard. <laughs> Oh, I've heard great things about Solo, but I think Volume 1 is out of print, and that annoyed me. Ugh. But Anthropomorphic Animals, the animation looks kind of Disney-esque, but with more mature storytelling. I'm all up for that, but I couldn't find Volume 1, so I'll probably skip on this one. That sucks. Super Turbo. This is a really long week of this back matter stuff. Wow. Twirl of Paradise. And that's okay. that. Let me switch on over to uh, <clears throat> Lunar so you can see the stuff from DC. All right. Not a whole DC. lot either. So. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, you're in it. What have we got? All right. So we got, I know it's not a collected edition, but I wanted to point this out. Batman Reptilian, another Batman Black Label book, is coming out. What? From Garth Ennis and Liam Sharp. Garth Ennis? Yep. Liam Sharp's cool. I'm this into the a Killer Croc. Look at this variant. Oh. I want to read it because I, I really like Killer Croc, so I'm interested. What's with all the plus signs over everybody's eyes? Will you get the floppies or wait for the hardcover? I'll. Maybe I'll read it digitally because uh, I have no room for floppies, but I do have Comixology on my tablet, so maybe yeah. I'll check it out. Yeah. <laughs> so we are getting this thing, which I don't know why, but it's a thing. Uh, DC through the 80s, the experiments. That's some of the best best period in time for the for DC. Yeah, but I mean, I love the cover. That looks really cool, really uh, emblematic of the era, but it just collects single issues of stuff that, I mean, it's not even issues like number ones. Like yeah. Secret Origins 48, Swamp Thing 40, Sandman 8, Doom Patrol 25, uh, uh, Lord Lord 48. Well, it's, gonna... uh, it's Dark Knight Returns number two. Like, number, Returns two. number two. I mean, at least give the audience number one so they're hooked and they want to go and buy the comic. I don't know. What are you supposed to do with issue two? Watchmen number one. Uh, why? Why? I mean, there are hundreds and thousands of versions of Watchmen. Why do we need that here? Uh, Camelot 3000, Angel Love, History of the DC Universe 1 and 2. Uh, Paul Levitz selected all of these. Paul Levitz, uh, you did a bad job. Well, yeah. Sandman 8 is like the first appearance of death. Yeah, uh, but... But yeah, well, it's not like you're not gonna get a story out of it, or you know, you're not, you know, you're not getting a chunk of stories or anything like that. So yeah, it's all good. Um, okay, so I like this book. I like that Swamp Thing's there, but like, yeah. So that is coming out, as well as Future State Justice League, which collects uh, one and two from Justice League, The Flash, Green Lantern, and Aquaman. Aquaman. Hell yeah. He's the best. 
Uh, but Future State Aquaman, it's it's cool because it's um, his daughter in the future with uh, Aqualad uh, training her. It's really cool. Oh. Uh, Harley Quinn. Look at this uh, cover. That's amazing. Nice. Well, oh, can uh, you put that up again? I didn't really, I couldn't make it out. Oh, this is a Pride oh. Month. Uh, Chris issue. Anka. Okay. Uh, Pride cover month thing. I'm all for that. This one's also really cool. Um, I like that art. Very uh, anime inspired. Yeah, that's cool. And oh, uh, if you're into Green Lantern, John Stewart, he's getting a celebration of 50 years with his, 50 his... years. Wow. Yeah. He's been around um, that long. Interesting. Yeah. Collecting uh, all these issues right here. Yep. And what else? Well, yeah. I guess that makes sense. I'm, I just realized how old I am. So yeah, that makes sense. And probably oh. the biggest item that everybody's going to be picking up if you're an Omnibus collector is Justice League, the New 52 Omnibus Volume 1. And can you tell me, I can't see, what issues that covers? Justice League 0 through 23, Aquaman 14 to 16, because this is part of Throne of Atlantis, uh -huh. Justice League Dark 22 and 23, uh, the New 52 co uh, Free Comic Book Day Special Edition number 1, Justice League of America 1 through 7, Trinity of Sin, Phantom Stranger 11, yeah. Constantine number 5, and Trinity of Sin, Pandora issues 1 through uh, 3. Oh, Pandora, that really cool character that they did nothing with. Yep. All um, right, I'll get it. It's fun because uh, <laughs> I think they released this in every format, right? The Justice League wow. New 52? Yeah. Because I have the trades. I was going to get the absolute, and then this got announced. I'm pretty sure there's hardcovers. There's <laughs> this version has been made in like every single volume uh, or every single format possible. If they come out with volumes two and three, then I will sell my books to Taylor. But if I get stuck with just this book, <laughs> Taylor's out of luck. You're going to get this omnibus, a couple trades, and then the Dark Side War omnibus. That sounds right. Uh, I mean, uh, New 52. We So far, we haven't had a volume two for a New 52, right? Aside from Harley Quinn? Uh, I think ba Batman by Scott Snyder got it, too. Oh, right, right. Forgot about him. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. And I'm happy to say... That I was completely wrong about Batwoman. She is on the schedule for October. Nice. Uh, let's see. Like yeah, legitimately yeah. on the schedule. She is coming out. And I totally thought that was not going to happen. So I'm pleased to be wrong. Yes. Yeah. Transmit number five. Transmit number five. This is the chunkier trade paperbacks. Um, is this the final one? Um, uh, yes. Yeah, it has issue 60 in it. Yeah. Yeah. It still has a DC, DC vertical label on it. That's nice. I mean, for people that weren't collecting the, the other ones. <laughs> so that is also coming out. And but I think even the, uh, the, the recent, I'm not sure. Wasn't the recent, uh, absolutes for transmit that the reprint, they came out with the, uh, black label. Yeah. The uh, reprints I, have the black label. It's weird. Uh, label. Um, and a couple Wonder Woman issues. Um, the cool. variants for this black and gold were amazing. There's yeah. one out there, I think it was KRS that put it out, is the most beautiful like cover. Yep, Joshua Middleton, that guy does amazing work. Mm. So, yeah, that's it, that's all we got. Well, this would be a good time to say that those books and more can be found at InStockTrades.com, where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. At the end of every month, we give away a free $50 gift card, courtesy of InStockTrades.com, to a lucky viewer out there who enters our random generator contest. If you 
try to put your name in more than once, I am going to publicly shame you. So yeah. keep that in mind. Nice. Fifty dollars I mean, or more in an order. Shame on you. Free shipping in the United States. Fabulous customer service. Fabulous packaging. That's who suck trades dot com. And uh, real quick, uh, the Patreon campfire is this Saturday. Oh, uh, five five p.m. Pacific, eight Eastern. So all of our uh, Patreon folks, nice. Uh, this Saturday is that is that time to do it. I don't know what we're gonna do. What we're gonna talk about, but we always show up and we always have an awesome time. Is there drinking involved? Typically, nice. There you go. All right. Cool. Um, next week, next Monday should be the gift card giveaway. giveaway. Yeah, uh, next I'll, Monday is the last Monday of the month. I'll put that on my count. Up. Oh, I'm not going to be here. Baseball game. Damn it! What? It's up to you guys. What? It's my <laughs> it's my wife's birthday, and I'm taking her. She wanted to go to a baseball game. Oh, that's all right. Well, that's different. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're excused. Thank Otherwise, you. I would have been pissed off. But well, remember to publicly shame anybody that double enters. Say oh, they're in everything. If they double enter, they'll get the two thumbs down. Yeah, but make sure they get their name mentioned because they need to be sh publicly shamed. And do the shame from from uh, Game of Thrones. Thorns or whatever that show was. Yeah, with the bell. Game of Thrones, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Who is playing? Uh, the Mets are in town to play the Nationals. <laughs> Who's playing Jets? Yeah. Who's the Mets on the Nats? All right. Uh, let's get out of here. All right, guys. What a great show. Uh Big shout out and love for everybody showing up in the chat today. Lots of good talk on there about 90s comics, about manga. Uh, just fell asleep during all that part, so he can just rewatch the show so he can uh, see that part again. Uh, Jess, where can people find you at? They can find me on Omni Dogs Vault, where this morning I just posted a video on all the great reads I read last week. And uh, I read a lot of good stuff, so please check it out for. Mm -hmm. Uh, ideas on uh, books that you should pick up. Omni Dogs Vault, and then on Instagram, Omni Dogs underscore Vault. All right, Morning. cool. And Geo, where can people find you at? You can find me on my channel, We Can Geek Them, where I talk about anime, comics, and manga, all that fun stuff. A week in Geek Them. All right, and you guys can hit me up on Instagram, Gabe Loves Nineties Comics. Uh, hit me up there. Uh, see a lot of stuff I post about 90s books and all kinds of fun stuff. And uh, I think that's it, everybody. We're out of here. Peace and love. Peace and love. Nah, nah. <laughs> Alf sucks. Alf eats pussy. <laughs> Nerd! Oh, we're back on screen. Oh, there we go. <laughs> we What's going on here? Oh, no. We've been on the screen for the last hour and a half. Don't let us see us again. Uh, this is where we talk about the people.